Hey, Booze, hey, it's your girl, Leanne Dulce, self-care strategist, and today is going to be such a great show, y'all. Today's going to be such a great show, but who are you listening to? Wake Up Happy Sis on KCCR, The Brownstone, where we are changing the narrative for Black and Brown people by telling our stories our way. So today, we're getting real raw and authentic about our relationship with food. Now in the black community, we know that there is a cultural attachment that we have to our food. When we're happy, we're gonna eat. When we're sad, we're definitely gonna eat. And it's generally not the healthiest of foods that dates way back to systemic problems that we've had, right? Couple that with the fact that there isn't always a way to get fresh food and stuff because the first thing you see in black communities are what? Loads of fast food restaurants. So today I've got two special guests here today and we're going to dig into some of that, some of the systemic problems that we're having. We're going to talk about eating healthy and changing your relationship to your food and how can you do that? Because it is fun to say it, but until you've had to do it, it's a whole different thing. So What I'm going to do today, today I have joining me, I have Crystal Taylor, who is a health and fitness coach with Fitness Is Not A Game. And we have Ilona Washington, who is an award-winning sales and marketing strategist, a mental health activist, and an author. So I want y'all to help me welcome these ladies. Hey, hey, hey. How are y'all doing today? Fantastic. Doing great. All right. So why don't we start with some introductions and you tell everybody who you guys are, because I let people talk for themselves. I I talk enough in this world. So we'll start with you, Crystal. Hey, y'all. Hey, first of all, thank you for having me. I I always say that first because I know how much of an honor it is to share your space because I know how protective you are of it. So thank you for that. So as Leanne said, I am Crystal Taylor. I am the owner of Fitness is Not a Game. I'm also an author and a health and fitness coach who provides healthy and sustainable weight loss solutions to women who are frustrated with fat diet. So the thing with that though, uh, and part of my program, part of my whole philosophy is that there are three M's when it comes to the pillars of fitness. So that's mindset, movement, and mindful eating. Make sure we talk about mindset first, because no matter what you do, if your mind isn't right, nothing else is going to work. It's not just about eating and exercising and what you're uh, uh, drinking water and all this stuff. You got to have this thing right first. So that is what I focus on. And I believe in balance, y'all. I don't I don't believe in restriction at all. I will eat some avocado toast and then I'm going to drink some wine right after. So you got to enjoy life. Exactly. Look, uh, yeah. so, we can't. We're not. Don't even get me started. OK, see, I'm not. I know we were sipping. Stop oh, my I'm, bad. I'm, I'm, I'm just sipping water today. I'm it's just sipping water today. <laughs> But it is the only reason I'm not drinking beer is because I ran out. So, and I have a beer group, so that's what I'm saying. It's 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 all about balance. Yes, I'm a health and fitness coach who runs a beer group. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, we want to tell us about you. Hi, I am Elona Washington, a three-time best-selling Amazon author. <laughs> Me too, a mental health activist, and I also recently started my own marketing boutique where I help small business owners develop their annual marketing plans and implement campaign strategies. That is awesome. I love it. And three times, okay, go ahead. Three oh, okay. You better drop your receipts. <laughs> okay, look, 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 I just, I just published my first book. We ain't, we ain't at that, uh. Not even a one time best selling off yet, but it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It. Not I mean, yet. So the key word is yet. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Coach Alex said it's not bragging if it's true. So look. <laughs> look. Okay. And, then, and you know, even if it is bragging, so what? Sometimes <laughs> we need to brag on ourselves because who, who else is going to do it? That right? part. I just call that self love. That because part. You're not doing it to make anybody else feel bad. No. Now, what is? That's just the is state. Exactly. All right. Loving so, yourself does not mean that you hate anybody else. It's okay. It is absolutely okay. 
And can we say that again for those in the back? Because people act like because I love me, I have to not love you or appreciate you or feel yet less about you. No. That's the thing about self-love. There's no competition. It's all about self. That's it. That's it. And they don't get it though. No, and I think especially, and I'm sorry because I'm just jumping all in. All right. I don't know what you, you know, your, your, your questions and stuff, but I just think that that's something. I, that's why I'm so glad that you do what you do, and especially for who you do it for, because as Black women, we do so much. The weight of the world has literally been carried on our shoulders, back, heads, and everything else. And we just do it. We take care of it. And we're so often, uh, so often we don't even accept help, right? We don't even accept support because we keep telling ourselves that we have to do, we have to do, we have to do when we don't have to do. And it's okay to love on ourselves. And y'all, the best form for me. My favorite form of self care is just saying no. I'm I'm so I'm so done with doing all the things for all the people. Crystal comes first, and I'm so okay with that. It took a long time to get there, but I love being here. I absolutely love it. And it's hard it's hard to get there because most of us are brought up with the concept of you don't put yourself first. You are especially once you have a husband or or a spouse, I'll say spouse, and yeah. children. Ooh. Oh, once you got those, you, you are you the bottom rung of the totem pole. You are the foundation of everything. And it's like we slowly cease to exist because we have to take care of everybody else. But we're changing that narrative around here. Around here, self-care is I care for myself first, just like they tell you on the plane. Put your mask on and then help somebody else because I'm no good to anybody if I'm not healthy, healed, and whole. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're about at Wake Up Happy Sis. So let, let's jump in this topic because we, we can stay on self-love. And so self -love, this self-love is so wrapped up into this whole conversation. Mm -hmm. So my first question, because I've got a lot of questions here, right? When we're looking at kind of the systemic barriers that people are having, because I'm jumping in on the heavy end. Mm. What are kind of some of the impacts that you are seeing that we're facing with just the basics of trying to get healthy food and nutrition information locally available in black and brown communities. Ooh, child. It, Ilona, you wanna go first? Cause I'm gonna I'm run, run my mouth. And I said mouth. So I wanna sit back and I'm... <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass to you, Crystal. Okay, so all right, let's let's buckle up, y'all. Drink some water. I, and I'm sorry, y'all. My clients call me the water bully. They do. I'm always talking about drinking water. Yes, you know, Leanne, they do. So there's so many barriers. They're physical, psychological, financial, a whole bunch of barriers. When you're looking at the food deserts. Like, it's a shame. It's a shame how many areas don't have grocery stores. I'm not talking about convenience marts. Grocery stores. Like, I grew up in what's considered to be the hood. You know? And you see the kids walking to school, eating flaming Hots and Pickles for breakfast. Mm-hmm. Or maybe a honey bun. There's no food that they like. It's hard for them to get healthier food right then and there. Then we look at the financial. And so, okay, we're gonna talk about a couple of things. So the financial and the psychological sort of go together. Mm -hmm. So, so often I hear it's too expensive to eat healthy. It's too expensive to eat healthy. If I want to get something healthy, I gotta pay all this money. True on the front end. Yeah, you can easily go and get you some of the value menu. They don't call them dollar menus no more, inflation. But the value menu, mm -hmm. and it's going to come with all this saturated fat, calories, all that good stuff. So you're saving money right then and there, but that leads to obesity, 
which can lead to all of these other health issues, which means now you're going to the doctor more with more prepayment, pre, uh, co-payments, uh, you're paying all these deductibles, you're paying prescriptions, all this stuff. So in the end, you, you end up paying more. It just doesn't look like it in the beginning, right? So it's like, but that's the psychological barrier. There's a, that conversation about what we're, um, what we can and we can't afford. And even the conversation about how to find the more affordable healthy earth foods. Or if there are certain things that you like, how to prepare foods in a healthier way. Mm -hmm. So the, the education is out there. The education is there. It's just that it's so much of it that it's like you, you don't, don't know where to start. Where, you don't even know where to start. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to start. You don't know who to trust. You don't know who to believe. It's just so much um, out there, and the the conversation isn't being had in the schools. Because I'm sorry, I don't want your show to get canceled or shut down. But I'm saying the government want to dumb and sit. Yes. They do. I agree with you. They don't want us to know this information. They don't want us to have that healthier relationship with food. So because of that, there's so much negative, you know, um, conversation around healthier eating. And they love, like, we're trying to you right now. We're going to be bombarded with all types of fast food com commercials. Mm hmm so with that, this, if you open your phone, that's all you see. The healthiest stuff is being blocked. And you're being told people are fit changed. Oh, Lord, that's all my conversation. That's why I said, I better go ahead and stop. <laughs> but if you do try to make a healthier change, people talk about you because it's abnormal. We've been, mm -hmm. we, we, we're taught to love cheese, sauce, all of that stuff is applauded. So when you try to make a healthier decision, because I don't believe that anything is absolutely healthy, but when you try to make it a healthier decision, it's a problem. So there's a lot of barriers. There are a lot of barriers. Just even not having the support in your household or in your circle for making healthier changes, that's the problem too. It's a huge problem. And one of the things I noticed, so when I'm when I'm shopping, and this may not be right for me to do, mm -hmm. I judge people's carts. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a small girl, but I used to be much bigger than I was, right? Mm -hmm. But I judge people's carts. Because mm -hmm. one thing I noticed, my grandmother's cart was full of fresh food. Mm -hmm. My aunt, her cart was full of everything, box, processed, canned, whatever. And mm -hmm. I think that that is also a cultural thing, mm -hmm. right? My grandmother made everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. Right. She taught all of us how to cook from scratch. And now it seems like because we don't have time, we don't have the money, we don't have the energy. Everything is box processed and quick and ready, microwavable type meals. Right. Mm -hmm. And my my I guess my question is, how do we begin to move to even just a state of healthier mm -hmm. when we are bombarded with so much information, right? How do we begin to take those steps to say, okay, um, maybe we won't buy white bread. We're going to try wheat bread if you have to have bread, or something like that, right? How do we start making that transition to where it's not a shock to everybody in the house mm -hmm. and we've got a revolt? Um, Go ahead. So uh, I made the transition and it, it was a reactive transition. When my son was born, he was actually born with celiac. So he couldn't eat gluten. And that was back in the early 2000s where I had to make everything from scratch down to an ice cream birthday cake, down to his top parts, like everything mm -hmm. the kid wanted to eat, I, I had to make. And because he was gluten free, the rest of the house was gluten free. And because, you know, there was there were certain things he needed to eat, like he, he needed to make sure he got extra fruits and vegetables because it was preventing um, the absorption of nutrition in his body. So we all ate, we all ate the way he ate. And then I became vegetarian. And then that was different for my um, ex-husband and for the children in the house. But 
after a while, they saw the benefits of it. Everyone knows you need to eat your fruits and vegetables, but the way I cooked it, I think I cooked it too good because I wouldn't have anything to eat. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sometimes it, it's about acceptance because you want to do it as part of a family, especially if you have a younger um, family member who has to go through something. And then sometimes it's you know upon the the chef and how they fix it. They make anything taste good. That's a fact. Because let's let's be clear. There are some overweight and obese vegans and vegetarians, people. Mm -hmm. Removing meat is not the issue. It's about how you eat and when you eat it, how you prepare it. You know, french fries are vegan, y'all. I love me some french fries. <laughs> love, love them. But everything I, I, I love what Imona said is it's really about how you prepare it. Seriously, if, if we can have the healthiest meal, like last night I made um, well, you want me to like it because I made spaghetti squash with meatless meatballs. Okay, you know, so it's spaghetti and meatballs, but just cooked in a different way. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I've done that too, and I've done spaghetti um Tex Mex. Spaghetti squash. Yes. With um, vegan uh, meat. Yes. Yeah. And the family loves it. Yep. Now, that's also the trick for the uh, the chefs in the house. Sometimes you don't tell them what you're doing. You just swap it out. Yes. And let them love on it because, you know, I remember one time one of my sons was like, I don't like mushrooms. I'm like, boy, it's much it's me, mushrooms, being that spaghetti sauce. What, what you talking about? <laughs> well, because he saw me cutting them up in his head. I'm not going to like this. So mm -hmm. I just started gradually swapping out stuff, and they had no idea. Chickpea pasta. They ain't have a clue. Because mm -hmm. I knew if I told them, they were like, uh, it tastes different. No, it does not. Yeah. Yeah. It mm -hmm. does not. But also, it's all about retraining our palates. How we eat is based on how we were trained to eat. And to me, that's the hardest part is the retraining your palate. And I'm I'm one who I don't like fake nothing, right? Or not, I don't like when people call it like 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 fake bacon, turkey bacon, but it's not bacon. Bacon is pork, right? We'll call it what it is, turkey strips or whatever. Because <laughs> that makes me that make me angry. I'm look. I'm a, I love me some turkey bacon. <laughs> you know what? Like the first time I had turkey bacon, I was pissed off. I cut my friend smooth out. The hell is this? You got meat in this case. Nothing like oh that. Oh my gosh. It's in my mind. So, I, I, I'm you turkey could, bacon. It needs to taste like bacon. You could get that um that smoked um oh, I forgot what they call it. The the like smoke liquid bacon. smoke. Yeah mm -hmm. the liquid smoke and put it in with the turkey bacon. It'll taste really good. And I also made coconut strips as bacon too. Mm -hmm. That was good too. With oh, I haven't tried that. I've mm -hmm. seen it. And they have bacon flavor too. Did banana peels, dried banana peels as a version yeah. of bacon. I was yeah. like, interesting. And yeah. for me, I think it is, we have to change the expectation mm -hmm. that the new thing is going to taste just like the old thing, right? Yeah. Like, I like chickpea pasta. I don't like spaghetti squash as mm -hmm. pasta. Right, okay. it's a texture thing for me. Mm -hmm. right? But I too make certain trend. Now, I, now I'm a meat eater. I am a carnivore. Call myself a flexitarian because I can I can eat a straight vegan diet. I have a shirt that says flexitarian. <laughs> okay, see, I, I, I need that. I need that because, and, and I think for me it was about resetting my expectation that it's going to taste like what I'm used to. Yeah, it can still be good and be different. I think once we start having those conversations, like you said, and just kind of sneak changing things, you know, it'll be a lot easier transitioning before people know it. Mm -hmm. They are eating healthier. Mm -hmm. So when you think about uh, the emotional connection that Black people have when we approach our relationship with food, right? How do we get past that aspect of, 
uh, Christmas, we're going to have a ham and we're going to have a turkey and we're going to have a pot roast and we're going to have some fried chicken and we're going to have chicken and dumplings and or whatever, right? Because there's such an emotional attachment that we have to the high fat, not healthy foods. How do we start to have those conversations and get to alternatives that our family will actually eat because a lot of sometimes there's certain things that my family just they were not going for it i don't care what you switched it out with if it wasn't if it wasn't the real thing they're not doing it so how do i as a mother try to introduce that to a family that may not be willing to ready to accept it well i would jump in and say don't you mess with the holidays let them holidays be the holidays. That that is one time where the only thing I'm trying to think: Do I make anything differently? No. Like I would say, just because I only use almond milk in the house, my macaroni and cheese will have almond milk. But in that Thanksgiving, we going all out, just the way I want it. Like okay. because nothing is this. Like I said, I don't believe in restriction. Right. I really believe in balance. So with that, I don't believe in cheat meals, cheat days, or anything like that. It's Thanksgiving is a day. So there's no pressure or no stress about one day. So even if we look at the entire day, because I'll tell y'all, in this household, we go hard. But Thanksgiving, like that, that's my favorite holiday. I love me some Thanksgiving. Get up, I always get up, I give me a good workout in, in the morning, drink some water. After breakfast, we run it. We got, we got mimosas, then we got wine, we got cocktails, we got food. We drink it. Wow, shoot, yeah. that's how it goes. And then, like, we don't eat a lot during the day just because typically cooking, but I'm gonna cook all the things and we're gonna eat all the things. So, that's one day out of a week, that's one day out of a month, that's one day out of a year. And if you want to break it down by the week, that's one meal out of 21. Why stress yourself over that? That's one, because that's typically not how you're going to eat. So even if you make it through the weekend, right? Because we have leftovers. Mm -hmm. you know? I was just about to ask. What okay. We doing with the okay, great. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Typically by Sunday, everybody Thanksgiving out. We tired. We tired. I'll, I will keep eating dressing and cranberry sauce. I ain't going to lie. I will eat that every day. But after that, okay, Sunday, Monday, get right back on what you were doing last Sunday, Monday. So with that, and, and even that, the whole concept of accepting that there's no cheap day or meal that's huge because when people don't realize when you tell yourself you're having a cheap meal cheap day you're telling yourself that what you're eating is bad for you and when you tell yourself that you're eating something bad you do a few things you kick yourself you need to starve yourself after that or you just throw your hands up and you just keep on eating all the things and give up Yep. Because you told yourself you ate something bad as opposed to saying this is a balanced part of my lifestyle. So, like, I'm going to say this, even though we drinking wine and all that stuff throughout the day, the majority of the day, like, this is, we don't eat a lot. I'm eating light stuff because I know I'm going to go hard Saturday. I mean, at night, it's really just about balance. And it's not even, and even with that, it's a balance. It's how you talk to yourself is so serious. It's not that I'm saying I can't eat anything else because I'm about to eat hard, go hard Thursday night. I'm like, I'm just going to eat lighter just so I don't feel super duper heavy tonight. Yeah. It's really about how you talk to yourself. What about you, Ilona? My reason for not, well, I'm trying to back off and not do Thanksgiving. My son still wants all the things, but it's mostly my diet. And also, I just am not subscribing to Thanksgiving anymore. Like it just I don't feel right knowing how how they did the Native American people. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to be a part of that. So but my my son he's 19. He doesn't care. He wants his cranberry sauce and his turkey. So well and I think for most because I know for me I don't really celebrate a lot of holidays. For me, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is a time for us to eat 
and be together. That's I it. don't subscribe to the concept of Thanksgiving, of the history of Thanksgiving. Exactly. It's a day that me and my family eat good and we get together and love on each other. Yep. That's it. And I might be by myself, loving on myself and eating all the good food myself. Yeah. Right. It's but I don't but I agree with you, Lona. I don't yeah. subscribe to that concept of Thanksgiving. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. thankful about that. Yeah. yeah. Ever since my grandma passed, my family hasn't really gotten together for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So then there's that too. Yeah. And then my kids, um, my daughter's 31 and she lives in Texas. And, you know, she goes to see her father's family. And then my son is with me. So yeah. it's not really yeah. a big deal. Yeah, like the Thanksgiving, I've talked about that with my family. So like you say, Leah, and that's what I love about it. There's no expectations. It's literally just family, fun, food, dog, the three of us. We playing games. That's it. And so I talked to my family about that because it does sicken me to do it on that day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, y'all, if we as a family can agree on one day that we're all going to take off and move somewhere at any other time throughout the year, you know, but that's the day that everybody gets off. You know what I'm saying? You know, as business owners, we can do it whenever we want to. But the majority of my family does not. So I'm like, y'all, how can we create another day? And we've been getting more, um, we've been getting bigger into Juneteenth as well. Mm -hmm. But just trying to find a day where everybody's like, okay, y'all, the the heck with the third Thursday, whatever. Let's do the second Saturday in October. You know what I'm saying? Let's just do a day. Let's just decide that this is going to be and make our own whatever we want to call it. But that's why I just love Thanksgiving because it's just like, I feel like Christmas has become too commercial. It's just, that's the one day where people just expect food and laughter. Just, and that's it. And it just- and football. You forgot the other F. I don't just with the NFL. Okay. Mm-mm. But no. They, but, they, but yeah, they still, they still watching. They gonna be on their football. I watched the NFL in this house ever since Kaepernick got kicked out. Really? So that's been what, six, seven years? Yes. Do not, no Super Bowl, no- None, none of that. None of it. I haven't been to a Super Bowl party in, since then either. Because to me, that like I, oh, I'm quick to write off some racist people. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I just can't. I can't. So I'm sorry. I know that's not what the conversation's about. But you're that's all right. That's all right. That's part of it too, though. Having the men in the other room watching the game and we running back and forth, drinks and plates and stuff. You know. But it's just a fun day. It's a fun day. Yeah, and I think that what I like is that the concept of we're getting away from you can't have this and you can't have that. To me, everything is moderation, mm-hmm. right? Now, I love me some oxtails. I do love sauce and gravy, too. But I just have learned to make it a little differently. or I'm not having it all the time. Mm-hmm. Right? We have to realize we do have to change the relationship with food right so that every sad thing is not we coming together with all the macaroni and cheese and the fried chicken and the meatballs and the you know and realizing that it's okay to have to put healthier stuff on that plate yep i think that's good and i love to learn that you that even though it was because you had to for your son that as your family, you guys were able to actually make that conversion, um, especially when there wasn't a lot out about Celia back, you know, mm-hmm. the, that wasn't my friend um, just found out he had that maybe a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. 40. Yep. And that's, you know, that's when it kicked in for me, my uh, early 40s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not knowing, and you're like, what is going on with my body? Why am I in pain? And he wasn't, he didn't have that connection to eat the food. Yep. I got sick, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, how has kind of developing a healthier relationship with food for you and for your family, kind of how has that impacted your life? So um, I've always, well, I've pretty much been in, a healthy eater. Um, my grandmother was a soul food um, person, and I had all the bad things. My mother, we used to call her the hamburger helper queen. <laughs> so, 
my experience hasn't been the best. And I know my college years are pretty bad, but as I got older and had a family, um, we always tried to do, you know, the, the meat, the starch, the vegetables, because that's how my mother was when it wasn't hamburger helper day. But um, it's like one of your questions about food, and it, and I was thinking it's like, all of my food changes have been reactive. It's because something happened instead of, you know, I'm going to make the choice to cut this out. So um, all the changes I've had has been um, due to medical reasons. And the most recent one has been um, depression and the lack of serotonin that my brain holds on to. So um, I'm vegan because of that. And I have to eat a lot of serotonin rich foods. Um, and exercise in order to um, fight off depression. And then your tea too, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you this then, because um, so one of the impacts then is having to become very well versed in the benefits of the different types of foods that you're eating so that you can understand okay this food's gonna have this reaction on me we're not gonna do that these are i didn't know about serotonin rich foods right so having to do all that kind of change your life have you then tried to change has that turned into a an avenue for you to support others in doing that like helping some of your friends not necessarily as a business model but as hey, these are some things. I kind of see some of the things that I've been going through in my friends. Do you, does that then kind of circulate to your community? Definitely. Uh, so any type of um, knowledge I gain, I share with my friends, family, community. My sister and I were just talking um, yesterday and she has to go on a Mediterranean diet. She had a, a ruptured aneurysm in September a brain aneurysm and they had to perform surgery and then they told her that she needed to change her diet too so um anything that i can do to you know help the fellow community i'm, I'm willing to do definitely now crystal is, since this is your business is helping people kind of change their lives through better fitness better nutrition what are some tips that you would give people who are thinking about making this transition so early so that it's not so dependent on this happened, mm -hmm. now I have to. What are some ways that we can be proactive mm -hmm. in kind of offsetting some of those potential problems? Well, I would say one, especially if there's a discussion um, of, with your doctor or if you have a concern about something that could be possible, right? Um, especially if there are certain diseases that people in your family are typically diagnosed with. And I'm very specific on how I say that because let's be clear that those preventable diseases don't run in your family. They're called preventable for a reason. It's the bad habits that run in our family, yeah. right? So with that Thinking about what you've heard, uh, G Mog was diagnosed with your auntie, your cousins, your sisters. You can make that decision to be proactive to say, Hey, I'm going to make some changes. But with that, what I've noticed a lot of people struggle with is all they hear, or the, what they mainly hear, is what they can't have anymore. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agree. I agree. But there's so much food out there. So much food. You know, so the, you, people say, what? No gluten. You know how much food is out there that doesn't have a gluten in it? What? No meat. You know how many foods you eat that does not have meat in it? You know, so that's the thing. Is Again, it's about how we talk to ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me, it's about the perspective. So for anybody who's considering making changes, I would say sit down and write down some of the things that you can have. Challenge yourself with that. Things that you don't have to give up. <coughs> Excuse me, go ahead, Ilana. 
I was gonna say and go to a farmer's market. Oh my gosh, all of those different fruits and vegetables and the way you can fix it. Um, the the biggest thing for me when I first became vegetarian instead um I also had high blood pressure. So I started instead of using like salt and pepper, I would just season it with fruit and it was just fruit juice and it was just so much better than any type of seasoning. And then I discovered savory spice shops and there's like thousands of spices. And I I mean, there's just no reason for you to feel like your food needs to be bland because you have this type of restriction. You just need to get out there and find out what's available. That part. I tell, look here, spices and herbs will save your life. And you got to use them at every cooking stage. Y'all don't don't season on top after you make it. Look here, you season throughout. Let those flavors cook into your food. You know, like, like I eat oatmeal every day. Monday through Friday. I love me some oatmeal. On the weekends, I have to force myself to eat something else. Like, Crystal, stop eating the same thing. But with that, I cook everything into the oatmeal. Hmm. I, I cut up bananas and cook it. When you cook fruits, the the natural juice, I mean the natural mm-hmm. sugars come out. You, you don't need to add no sugar. You don't need any like literally I cook the the bananas, the cinnamon, the chia seeds, and the peanut butter, cook it all up in there and all the flavors through every doggone body. Yep. It's literally the same way with like with brown rice. Quick tip, y'all. But folks are like, brown rice is nasty, you know, and it is crunchy. First of all, stop cooking with water. You shouldn't cook with water. Cook is for boiling only. If you cooking, get you some broth, whether it's chicken, vegetables, something. But just uh, with brown rice, just cooking with broth, seasoning the heck out of that dog on broth, and then putting the rice in there and letting it go all up in the rice. Damn. Woo! Child, I tell you, <laughs> look here. I could make some brown rice up of this piece. But it's really just about, like Ilona said, redirecting how you think about it. Mm-hmm. Now, that part, I definitely agree. Because I'm in now now, because as soon, as soon as you said no meat, I was I, I was over here in, in pain. Because <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I don't care. There are certain things I'm not going to give up. Now, I, and now I understand about all the other things. There are certain things that are like all the meat stock or certain ones. Mm-hmm. Can I still have chicken or or can I still have beef? Do you, that, know, you know, your body can have a meat intolerance. Like you could feel sluggish and bloated and sleepy. Like I once I cut the meat out of my diet. I didn't feel the need to take a midday nap. Like I just felt so much better. And I'm bummed about it because I do miss them chicken wings. I'm in Nashville, I want some hot chicken, but <laughs> but I gotta do what's best for me. Like once you hit 50, I think all the things come out. It, it ain't just 50, it, it comes before the end. Look here. Uh, but the thing about it, like the body is just, uh, what's the word, boy that talking about? Talking about the age, menopause brain, woo, woo, woo. words getting stuck in my head right now. But uh, with your body, certain foods, meats are, especially beef, they're harder for your body to break down. Yeah. So that's why you can feel more sluggish and lethargic because it's like trucking, trudging through. Um, but with that, you just have to be mindful of what you're eating and how you feel afterwards. Um, like I said, I'm a flexitarian like you. For the most part, I would say when I was in high school, I stopped eating beef and pork. So I was mainly just doing seafood and poultry. And then I got to a point where um, I stopped doing a lot of poultry and it was mainly just seafood. So I was pescatarian. But then there were days well, actually I was having um, some physical issues. Like my body was going through all the things. So my, I started, my iron was dropping. Y'all women, y'all get it. Mm-hmm. So I had, I had, I, I knew something was wrong when I started craving beef burgers. Mm. Right, especially if you've not had them in so long. My doctor was like, your body is becoming depleted because of everything you're going through. So your body needs it, right? And yes, you can get iron in many other ways. But I said that to say that there were times when, 
I realized I wanted a burger. I wanted a chicken. I don't. It's so funny because I can't remember the last time, like just regular shopping. I don't buy pork, but think, think I'll make a ham on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes, I do make a ham and I eat it. And that's the only, like, that's probably one of the only pieces of pork that I can really eat. If I eat pepperoni, it makes me sick. It's so weird. Um, but I'm saying on that to say that you just have to be mindful of how your body responds to certain things because some people need the beef. They do, right? No, physically, 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 physically need it. <laughs> I ain't talking about really, really want it because they love it. <laughs> but yeah, you do you do have to be um be conscious of that. Be conscious of that. Well, that's like me. Like I can't do a lot of sugar. So sugar will sugar tanks my body. So I can have like a little bit of sugar and then I feel nauseous. And I have like life physical stomach cramps, like somebody is punching the crap out of me. And mm -hmm. either I have to flush my body with a ton of water immediately, mm -hmm. quickly, or I have to go take a nap. So it can just naturally pass through my system. My daughter has that too. That's interesting. I've never heard of anyone else who went through that. Mine came because I had gastric bypass. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, your body doesn't absorb a lot of things. So I literally came out of surgery and I couldn't tolerate sugar. Oh wow. So it was it was like I don't know what it was, but it was like instant. I couldn't tolerate sugar. And they would give you these little insurers to drink. And I would have to dilute them. They were like, well, dilute them with water, because water, I mean milk, because milk still has protein in it. By that time I was drinking full milk because I couldn't tolerate any sugar. And it literally, to this day, it makes me sick. But it's a good way, I hate to say it, it's a good way to let that stuff go. Mm -hmm. Because now I can have a couple of pieces of candy versus the whole bag, right? Um, a scoop of ice cream, a spoonful of ice cream versus, oh, I'm getting a whole bowl full, right? Mm -hmm. So it allows, I do agree sometimes those requirements will force what you probably should have been doing anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about busy lifestyles and nutrition. Because mm -hmm. I, there's, I, there's a lot of us who they've got the kids, they've got the husband, they've got the job or the or the business, and they just don't even feel like they know what to do because I got 30 minutes. I need a healthy meal in 30 minutes for my family. Because I can make that rice roni, I can make that helper, helper. You know, them things be done in like 10 minutes. Yes. Right? But now you want me to cut up a chicken, you want me to cook all these fresh vegetables and what do we say to them to help pull pull them come on in friend you can do this crock pot it's the pot mm -hmm. meal plan on sunday that that slow cooker will save your whole life just taking 30 minutes or an hour to chop up all the stuff and just put it in the bag, throw it in the freezer, label it. So when it's time to eat, just throw it in the crock pot and just move on back to the day. Mm -hmm. Now to me, crock pots are, like once I got my pressure cooker, the crock pot just went on out the window. But really, pressure cookers are the best thing in life. And you know what I really- Is that in an air fryer? I hate air fryers. <gasps> oh I knew, I know. This was my problem with the air fryer. And I've since I hate the air fryer that you have that has the basket. Oh, I don't have you know, that kind. The one I you only cook like two pieces of chicken. Exactly. You, you have a family, you're not doing it. And I just didn't like the fact that well, I still gotta sit here and every six minutes and turn this stuff over. Like mm -hmm. to me, it made me too hands-on. Um, but my pressure cooker. I've cooked ribs in that thing. I've cooked roast in there. I done made, I make, I make any, I make my greens in there. Mm -hmm. I make, I make everything that I would, could make in a crock pot, mm -hmm. in a pressure cooker. And now it's done in like an hour mm -hmm. versus six hours, eight hours. Now, if I was, if now, but I also work from home. Yeah. So if I had to go to work, yeah, I would probably use a crock pot because I can put that stuff on before I leave, come mm -hmm. back. 
it'll be done. Are there favorite recipes that you guys have for kind of the quick little meal, your favorite quick little meal that you like to create? Quick meal? Go ahead, Emma. It doesn't have to be quick. Let's say your favorite, what's your favorite uh, healthy meal that you like to create? Uh, saute some kale with some spaghetti and lemon juice, garlic, a little bit of nutritional yeast, and um, go to town. Mm. Okay, okay. I like that. I like this. Anything, look, anytime you say garlic to me, I'll be like, yes. Look. A little extra on there. Look. I love me some garlic. So I would say one of my favorite healthy herb meals. I found a recipe years ago. My husband decided to try a uh, vegetarian for a while. So it's like, okay, let's find some recipes that we all like. And um, we found this zucchini, black bean, and corn quesadilla recipe. Cha, cha, cha. When I tell you, one of the kids love it. If they come down to see me making quesadillas, it's like everybody had like, those quesadillas? I'm like, yeah, calm down. And then I made them at my retreat for my clients a couple years ago. I had to take a video of one of my clients. When I tell you, she was scooping it up, looking up, and she was like, I don't care. No. <laughs> I like it because it's so flavorful and it doesn't have meat, but you can play around with it. If you want to put your meats in it, your chicken, shrimp, steak, whatever, you can, but you don't even miss it. It's literally just zucchini, corn, black beans, um, seasoning, like chili powder and stuff like that, and then sprinkle a little cheese in there. That's it. It's so doggone good. Like, um, I feel like the show notes, uh, we're going to need like recipes. Oh. Thank you, that. I agree because I'm gonna need that pasta with the little lemon and garlic. I'm gonna need the quesadillas. The case you got the quesadillas. Oh, in the book. They in the book. We come so let's switch to that real quick. Because <laughs> we're talking recipes and stuff, right? Since I mean, I'm just saying, since we are talking recipes, let me do my little station identification. Uh, you are with, listening. And watching, hopefully watching, Wake Up Happy Sis on KCCR The Brownstone, where we're changing the narrative for black and brown people by telling our stories our way. So, Crystal, well, tell them about this. Tell them about this. About, about, just, just go on and tell them about it. Yes. So that is uh, my cookbook, In the Kitchen with Crystal. And it came about because what I do every Saturday Every Saturday morning, I do a segment called In the Kitchen with Crystal, just because I know that what you're talking about with people being concerned and scared of meal prep. First of all, when people look at social media and see meal prep, they'll see 27 containers with all the meals, and that can be intimidating. So what I do is, is I just show you how to make healthier meals in 30 minutes or less, right? And uh, you can prep for the week, prep for however. So I decided to put them all in a cookbook, and inside the cookbook, you'll find everything for breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, snacks. I even have two pages of homemade uh, seasoning blend. So you don't have to buy all the stuff at the store. So you don't have to worry about all the extra salt and all that stuff. It's really make look it. And the, I'm going to tell y'all that jerk seasoning blend, I refuse to buy or use any other one. But it's really just about making healthy er eating delicious and easy. Like, I'm like, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's some of my favorite recipes, some of my absolute favorite things that I eat all the time and they are family friendly kid approved because you know once you get the kids asking for it then you know it's a winner so okay. look once the children asking about it look I oh, don't you're like yeah 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 i got i got something here look that's what i said in case of dealers <laughs> so um i just thought of my favorite recipe of all time. The kale thing was a new thing, but um, basmati rice, plantain, um, and black beans and mozzarella cheese. But I can't eat the mozzarella cheese anymore. 
So I'm going to have to get the vegan version of it. But yes, that's Ooh, everything. That sounds delicious. Everything. Okay. If y'all can how, how are you doing the plantains? Um, frying them up. Okay. Okay. Now, are these sweet plantains? Sweet plantains. Yeah. See, I'd have to get the uns. I have to get the. the yeah, and then when you season the black beans, you do it. You know, like salty, spicy, so you get that contrast. It's amazing. Okay. Oh, that sounds good. Well, I'm a, look, look, y'all, on the listening audience. I'm gonna see. If Elona going to give us a recipe and Crystal going to give us a recipe that we can drop in um, in a little download for y'all, you know, mm -hmm. just just so you can try just to try one thing new. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's about trying something new and stepping out of our comfort zone to see that what we're used to can change. It's yeah. okay to change. It's okay to like, look, me being a flexitarian. A meditarian, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, people, there was a time when people thought I was vegan because I, that's all they saw me at were vegan restaurants. That's where people were used to seeing mm -hmm. me. So they were, the vegan beauty was so confused when they, when they learned that I was not vegan. No, I, I, no, I'm not. I, I will go and take this vegan food and go get me some grilled chicken. We're gonna go with. We gonna like because I I do agree that yes I need to be healthier. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna still eat my meat. That's, we're not gonna we're not gonna take take that from Leanne. Now when the doctors say hey you're gonna die if you keep eating the meat, I got to go someday. Mm -hmm. As long as it ain't tomorrow, Doc, I'm okay. Like, that did it. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. But but that's sometimes that's how I used to feel. Is let let the doctor tell me I can't have meat and gravy. Well, you know what? Well, you know what? Honestly, it's it's the whole when somebody tells you can't have some, you want it more. Yes. Right? That's what I said. Just if you just sit down and thought about all the foods that you eat every day that don't have meat in it, that's a lot of doggone food. There are a lot of, and then we're just talking about vegetarian. We're not talking about vegan. Vegan, shout out to the vegans because that's that's a whole commitment. That's a commitment. They, and don't nobody read the label like a vegan. <laughs> Put it back. No, no. She's right, though. It's true. Right. That's, that's oh, not, the right, that's not the right jello. Uh, that's perfect. I, I, I shout out to y'all, but when it, if you just thinking about removing meat, just don't even think about you can't have, you can't have, you can't have. Because once you hear that, you just want it. Like, so I did a, oh y'all, I did a fitness competition in 2014. And my diet was strict. I mean, strict. Like one day she told me I could have four ounces of fish and 10 almonds. I said, I got to count my almonds? Like, that's how strict it is. Like, y'all, it was strict. And because I got to get on stage in my underdraws and be judged, I'm going to follow this doggone diet. I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to strike. I'm not. It was, I think I, I think I prepped for 16 weeks, something like that. But all I thought about was what I couldn't have. Mm -hmm. I, it was so bad. I got a, one of those big old post-it note things. I put it up on my kitchen wall and it was called crystal wants. And every time I thought about something I wanted, but I couldn't have, I would go write it on the board. By the time I stepped on that stage, I had like four columns. Plus I was all in the index. When I tell y'all my Pinterest board was on fire. Cause I was just like, I'm going to make this. And then I would make stuff for my family and I would just sit there and watch them eat. And I'm like, describe it. What it tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> like it was bad. It was, but it was literally all I could think about was what I couldn't have, as opposed to all the stuff that she told me I could. Just like even if anybody's had to have a colonoscopy, when you can't eat the day before, right? You're like I, my colonoscopy that I had last year, I knew something was wrong. I drove past a McDonald's billboard and saw that Big Mac. Was like, oh, that's delicious. No, you don't eat that. 
you know, <laughs> I don't sometimes I'm realizing it's not the meat that I miss, it's the sauces. Mm. So I just try to find a way to incorporate the sauces in my mm. food. Mm. That's no, that's a good idea because I think it is because like unseasoned chicken's not good, unseasoned sure. ground beef is not good, but the mm. seasonings and the sauces, mm. it all just comes together so beautifully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's I mean, and 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 don't get me wrong, I will go out and buy some non-meat. I don't know what you call it because we know fake meat. I'll go buy. So I'll go buy some of that in a minute. And I went, I had a date with this guy and he cooked food and, and I bought the food and he cooked it and it was all vegan because he was vegan. Mm. Now, had I known he was vegan, I probably wouldn't have went on the date. What, did, did he cook it well? Yes. Okay. And I even let him keep the food because otherwise, I, you know, because he had bad blood. You, you need it more than I do, friend. You funny. That's how, you know. Uh, like you look you look confused over there. <laughs> there are some um Facebook groups of uh black vegans and they're cooking soul food for the holidays. So yeah, and they they're able to make it taste like mm -hmm. they put the smoked turkey up in there. Mm. The first time I had a vegan chocolate cake. And when I tell you, Ebony, to this day. I have never had, and I don't even eat sweets and stuff like that anymore. This is when I still did. Um, I was a rebel back then. But the, that was the best cake I've ever had in my life. Mm. Period. Like, period. That was, mm. I was still here, so this is in the last 12 years. Hands down. Wow. I, I, would, I don't know what she put in it. But I was like, this is <laughs> is this a rich? <laughs> like, so I tell people, don't knock it until you try it. Yes. Right? Because people have so many preconceived notions mm -hmm. about what something's going to taste like. And and like sitting there, you can there are people who can make it taste like anything they want. Mm -hmm. That part. It's all about the seasonings and the in the sauces. Right? Ate because when Elona just said that, it made me think about it. The other day, I made like a turkey burger wrap. But like you said, it wasn't even a burger. I, I had been wanting a burger, but it wasn't the burger. I really wanted to taste the combination of the ketchup, mustard, and pickle. Mm -hmm. Not that I had it because I don't think we had bread. I don't remember if we even had bread or not. But I was like, I just want the ketchup, mustard, and pickle. So I'm going to make a, a turkey burger wrap. But that was really what I wanted. So you and you know, I think that. that's good that you said that because mm -hmm. that makes us think about it. is it the meat we want mm -hmm. or is it that specific food we want or is it the seasonings and the accoutrement that is on it, mm -hmm. right? The sauce, yes. the seasonings, the combination of those things that really you're trying to get that taste of. Yes. So, that's mm -hmm. so just think about it, people. Just think there's a lot of alternatives. Uh, Chris has got us changing our mindset so that mm -hmm. We're not, we're focused on what we can't have. We're focusing on what we can have. Ilona's having us rethink and reimagine because you can make it. You can make it taste like what you want mm -hmm. with the and without using salt-based seasonings. Find some fresh herbs and some spices that are salt-free, gluten-free, and all the other things, mm -hmm. and just try it out. And try a little fruit juice, too. Oh yes, and the fruit juice because I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that because that's what I put on my um, Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. Now mine do have bacon. I haven't thought about. It. I mine might have turkey bacon. Mm -hmm. But a little, but try. I put them in the oven. I put just a little bit of salt on them mm -hmm. and lime juice. Oh, and they be crispy. Oh, they be mm -hmm. so good. Okay. Do you know it's six thirty already? Wow. Oh, wow. It's been an hour. We wow. just, I just feel like we just started talking. I know. That's why I asked you how long at the beginning. I was like, I, I'll keep going. Sit here all night, pop my feet up on the desk, like, and then, <laughs> and then, girl. <laughs> no, well, then, I think we're going to need you to move to the kitchen and start making some stuff. That's what you're going to need. Yeah. Look, look. 
Don't threaten me with it. Always welcome. <laughs> Look, y'all always welcome to come back. I wish I had a place that had like a kitchen. So we could have done this as a cooking show. Look. You ain't notice every time you talk about food, I've been over here dancing. I'm sitting here like, oh, and they they didn't laugh at me. And so on my segments, they wait to see if I'm gonna dance, or because I will walk off the screen too. If it's that good, I'm gonna walk off. I'm one of them dramatic ones. And you all time, like, you taste the look. Yeah, look, I will drop the fork whoop, and walk off. Look at all while I'm chopping. No, it's like you said, garlic. If I'm cooking with garlic and you know when it start heating up and I start smelling it, oh, yes, oh, my goodness, garlic and ginger together. Yeah, look, look, you be like me, and because I call myself fat girl foodie because I do love to eat. That is my love language. Look so, to all the men out there, <laughs> you gotta feed me. We look, can, we can eat healthy, baby. We can eat healthy. Look here, we had a date. We do date days. And um, his last date day, I was like, what time are we meeting? I think it was like two o'clock, something like that. I was like, when we eating though? Like, <laughs> he was like, huh? Like, there's no way you plan to date for me without food. Like, and my on my birthday, it was a birthday weekend getaway. And I was like, but when are we eating? He was like, huh? <laughs> but are we eating before we go or? When we get there, he was like, seriously, I just need to understand. My, my stomach needs and to be prepared. Look, look. And so I you have a little it. snack now. Exactly. You know. Tell me something. If you need me to hold off for two hours, then I'm going to go ahead and eat something, like a protein bar or something real quick. Yeah. But, but he, oh, it's a shame. Once I mentioned being hungry, he's like, uh-oh. Once I mention it, you got 20 minutes to feed me. It's horrible. I'm like a gremlin. <laughs> I'm like a gremlin. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That that's that's hilarious. But, that, but I'm the same way. But I'm the same way. Once I say I'm hungry, you yeah, you got about 20, 30 minutes yeah. before the face change, and I'll be like, Yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah, I get yeah. it. But I eat, and that's the other thing too. I'm sorry, real quick, because I know we're cutting out. I've trained my body to need food every three hours. That's how you keep your metabolism up. Folks who are like, oh, I only eat once a day and I can't lose weight. That's why. Your body doesn't have enough fuel. You're not giving enough energy. So I'm constantly like, right now, I, I haven't eaten since lunch. <laughs> like that, that's a problem. <laughs> when you go to eat, when you get off, when we get off, you're going to go make you something to eat. Yes. Well, it's his night for dinner. So we're going to see. I had I have my food and then I, I got on the stream yard. But it's right here. Ah. Okay, so what's on your plate? What's on your plate? Oh, it's, oh, it's snacks. It's just vegan chocolate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. I, I thought you had the whole meal. Like, I'm just waiting for y'all to shut up. Oh, not yet. I'm doing Brussels sprouts tonight. Mm. Uh, can I tell you, Brussels sprouts are my favorite. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to bake it, like you said, because I usually just fry it, but I'm going to bake it. Mm -hmm. And it, because it comes so, it comes out so crispy, and that little bit of that little bit of lime juice on there, mm -hmm. that just that just kick it up a notch. And if you want it spicy, you can put a little cayenne pepper on there, yeah. get a little spicy. spicy. All my languages, I love spicy. I love spicy. They say my taste buds are dead. See, I like spicy, but not burn my lips off hot. I like for my lips to. I like to my lips to tingle. No, you probably see your tingle is probably burning my lips off. I'm not. Mm -mm, mm. Yeah, I think I, honestly, obviously my taste buds have changed. Well, they've gotten worse because I've eaten food like when I was in Ghana. I'm eating it and I'm telling people to taste it, and like they would take half a bite and they almost pass and I'll grab it water and I'm just eating. I don't taste nothing. I'm just I don't know. I was just with a friend that was a couple weeks ago eating some wings. I'm like here, taste it. He almost passed out. He's like, you want my whole meal for the rest of the day? I can't even taste nothing. I'm just sitting there just eating. Just... But I love spicy. Yeah, that, yeah that, them, them taste buds. Is, you you are uh, level 42 hot. Mm -mm. I love well, it. At least we know. 
I'm just watching. You're not allowing Crystal. We're not. We're not letting Crystal cook no spicy food. Let me spice my own Crystal. That's why I don't. I typically don't make spicy in the house. Mm -hmm. Like I have to. Cause you go kill everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's bad. When I was in Egypt, they called me a dragon. They had me. I was at a spice shop, and they were like, they had this dried pepper, and they like anybody willing to taste it? Cause it was like this big. And I was like, yeah, give it to me. And they were just everybody in the shop just watching me. And I'm. Just, we talking. It was like, well, within like five minutes, you're going to feel it. I was like, okay. Kept on eating it. He just kept looking like, are you a dragon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That's like, you muy caliente. You already hot. That hot ain't doing nothing for you. And the spice is good for your metabolism. Just saying, it revs it up. Okay, well, I'm still not doing Burma lift off. But okay, we got we to gotta wrap this up because Paulette's going to be mad because I'm over. But it's a good conversation. Yes. So, uh, Ilona, why don't you tell us and tell the people up there how they can connect with you to learn more about what you do? Get one of your one of your your three best selling books. Like, come on. like tell them a little bit about you, girl. Come on. So let's see. I'm on all the internet streets. Let's see. We could do Instagram. It's Ilona Washington. Facebook is Ilona Washington. LinkedIn is Ilona Washington. <laughs> I'm easy to find. Twitter is a lot of Washington. <laughs> well, that's how it's supposed to be. be. That's right. Well, yeah, I'll make sure you go and check her out. Check out her services. Get you some marketing for your business. She's got a marketing boutique. So make sure you go and check her out, y'all. Yeah. And then she might, and maybe you could slide in her DMs and ask her about a recipe. She, she might be nice enough to give you one. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, don't hurt you. Try. Don't hurt you try. I don't know. <laughs> Depends on who it is. Depends on who it is. I just can't give my recipes out to everybody. Mm. Well, that's why you leave them in the uh, in the other inbox. They don't, mm -mm. No, no. <laughs> you leave them. In, you leave them over there. That's, that's hilarious. Okay, Crystal, let, uh, tell the people how they can contact you. I'm like Ilona, but just the other way around. Everything is fitness is not a game. On Facebook, it's fitness is not a game. On Instagram, it's fitness is not a game. On TikTok, it's fitness is not a game. <laughs> on LinkedIn, it's me, but I also have a fitness is not a game page. And uh, I'm not on... I haven't been on Twitter. I don't know how long, but the easiest, uh, and then also the site, of course, fitness is not a game. But the easiest would probably be on, um, yeah, one of all of. I check all of. Them. Let me just let me stop playing. Facebook, IG, either way, or just directly. And I, 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 I check my own emails. Y'all, okay, Taylor, fitness is not a game too. If you just want to reach out directly. All right, and the, uh, tell them about your. Your was your challenge you have coming every week? Oh yeah, so because we are ladies of a, a a certain age, we start going through different things. So um, what? And I will send I will send you this link, Leanne. So and it's so interesting that we talked a lot today about monitoring our bodies based on what we're eating, and there are foods that can also impact our menopause symptoms and perimenopause symptoms. So I do have um, a, a free sign up if you want the five foods to avoid to reduce your menopause symptoms. So yeah. And then we're talking, we're going to do a training about how to make menopause and weight loss work for you as well. So find all the information on fitnessnotagame.com. So I have a menopause question so i'm um, yeah. in it but i don't really have no symptoms like i've had good. some re hot flashes good <laughs> but i can't lose weight mm. mm -hmm. it's like super hard to lose weight so i guess mm -hmm. that's part of it too okay yeah all right then i'm signed up for your challenge yeah i will give you the link yeah, and this it's a it's an online training. So I'm doing it every week, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central and 7 p.m. Central. So yeah. Thank Make you. sure y'all go and check them out. Now, yeah. uh like I said, I'm gonna see, you know, you wanna be holding on to them recipes. She may not give y'all one, 
But I'm going to try and talk her into it. Just one. We're going to go with that pasta thing because I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that pasta with the sauteed kale because there's only four ingredients. Now, if you were listening, you got all the ingredients. You got everything you need. Mm -hmm. That's the right. quick one. I'll, I'll give that away. That's a quick one. It is quick. It's quick and easy. So we're going to do that. And you're going to go to bit.ly slash W-U-H-S foodie. And we're going to have a free download for you. And that's also how you're going to be able to make sure you can get in contact with these awesome ladies, learn a little bit about what they do, and maybe do a little bit of business with them because this is what we're about. We're about building up the resources in our community for us. So make sure you're checking us out and make sure that you come on back next Monday to Wake Up Happy Sis, 10 a.m. Eastern, every Monday, then it replays throughout the week. So don't worry if you miss a Monday. You can you can go on back and listen to it again, okay? So I want to thank y'all for coming. It has been a wonderful conversation. Um, and thank y'all for listening in. This is KCCR The Brownstone. We're to changing the narrative for black and brown people by telling our stories our way. See y'all later.